Hi everyone, uh, Peter here. Welcome to SFM Spotlight episode uh, 51. Before I talk about all the new book news, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who keep on watching SFM Spotlight and also wish you, if you are celebrating, Happy Lunar New Year. I wanted to post three videos last week, but I couldn't do it because with Lunar New Year, it was a super busy day uh, for me. Imagine something like Thanksgiving, probably in the USA. It is an event as busy as that, but now uh, with Lunar New Year uh, finished, it is now the year of the dragon and what I called as the year of the fantasy genre because it is dragon after all. So yeah, hopefully, whether you are celebrating or not, hopefully this year will be blessed with many more uh, gorgeous books and also all the best things for all of us. And for those of you who are new to SFF Spotlight, this is where I will talk about new book news, new Kickstarter campaign, new special editions, and also new cover reveals and noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And believe me, I have a lot of topics to talk about again uh, today, about 20 topics, and there are plenty of gorgeous special editions to Spotlight and many more news. Let's start from book news first. The first one is regarding one of my most anticipated books uh, of this year, and it is the sequel to one of my favorites of published fantasy books, Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Litzau. So Nicholas Litzau on his Instagram account recently posted about uh, the status of his sequel, The Cure for Living. And because of how big The Cure for Living is, I think it is about, I think, 500,000 words long, it will be divided into two volumes. But rest assured that both of them will be released at the same time. The reason for the division is simply because the books are too big and for more reasons that we will find out when we're uh, when we're reading uh, the book. I assume this will be something a bit similar to Kingdoms of Death and also The Ashes of Man by Christopher Rokio. Even though Kingdoms of Death and also The Ashes of Man was supposed to be one book, to me, if I didn't know about it, I would have thought that Kingdoms of Death was supposed to be uh, like that without any division being given to it. So maybe The Cure for Living will be something uh, like that as well. This is easily one of my most anticipated books. I love Dreams of the Dying very much and I hope The Cure for Living will be even better. I know that Nicholas Litzau is very confident that it is a stronger book compared to Dreams of the Dying. And regarding the release date, it is very likely that both books, part one and part two of The Cure for Living will be released in 2024. So yeah, I look forward to reading that. And after that, before we move on to talk about uh, special editions updates, Orbit just announced that they will be doing, they will be releasing their first ever lit RPG novel. I think this is quite a big thing because as far as I know, this is the first time a traditional publisher in the fantasy and sci-fi genre actually released a lit RPG novel. And David Dalglish, the author behind so many books published by Orbit Books, will be the first one. And the title is Level Unknown. I have read plenty of books by David Dalglish and I enjoyed all of them. So although I don't call myself a fan, a big fan of the lit RPG, I tend to just prefer playing video games. But at the same time, uh, solo leveling manhua is one of my favorite manhua series of all time. So I certainly look forward to reading this as well. And for those of you who don't know, lit RPG is a subgenre in the fantasy and sci-fi genre that really thrive in the self-published fantasy community. So that's it for new book news. Now let's talk about special editions first, and then we will talk about some Kickstarter campaigns. For the special edition, let's start from the big Curious King updates. The first update from the Curious King is regarding uh, the cover art printing by Tommy Arnold of The Blade itself, of their edition of The Blade itself. I consider that cover art truly one of the best cover arts to ever grace a fantasy uh, novel. And I think many of you know that the Curious King edition of The Blade itself is my favorite uh, special editions, my favorite special or limited editions of all time at the moment. And yeah, Tommy Arnold is releasing a limited printing of the cover art. I think this printing will actually go live within uh, this month probably soon after I post this video. And the price, if I'm not mistaken, will be about 100 uh, pounds. And moving on after that, we have an update on uh, the Curious King edition of the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin, illustrated by John Anthony Di Giovanni. First, we have this interior artworks a preview of the fifth season, again, by John Anthony Di Giovanni. That guy got range as an artist, and I really love this artwork as well. This is a depiction of the enigmatic Scafa sailing to return Sienite to the Vulcrum. But other than that, Curious King is quite confident that this one, their edition of the fifth season, will be delivered, will be dispatched 
uh, this April, so about two months uh, from now. And after that, a big update on their edition of the Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Assuming that the fifth season is dispatched in April, well, the edition of Hyperion will soon follow. So probably in the first half of 2024, I predict either in May or in June. And as you can see in the image here, this is a finished painting, oil painting of the Shrike by Jamie Jones, the legendary uh, Jamie Jones. And after that, there's still two more news from The Curious King. The next one is regarding the edition of Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie, the sequel to The Blade itself. So it has been officially confirmed by Curious King, even though Joe Abercrombie actually announced it on his birthday accidentally. But Curious King has officially confirmed that Before They Are Hanged will feature a different artist. Both uh, cover art and also interior artworks will now be illustrated by Vance Kovacs. But I think this would be done in a similar design and probably in composition similar to the one that were done by Tommy Arnold. But I know Vance Kovacs from the works that he did from uh, plenty of video games such as God of War Ragnarok and the concept art that he did for God of War Ragnarok actually became my wallpapers for quite a while. Loved them very much and I'm confident that he can nail the artworks for Before They Are Hanged uh, as well. And that's not the only news regarding Before They Are Hanged. Kears King has also mentioned that the pre-order for their edition of Before they are hanged will begin in March and probably it will be shipping in late uh, 2024, so within this year as well. And that includes the last update from Curious King and that is for Legend by David uh, Gamel. The pre-order for Legend will begin in June 2024 and probably will ship after before they are hanged, also at the end of 2024 if everything goes well. So yeah, Curious King will be super busy this year. But regarding quality, if it's anything as good as the edition of the Blade itself, then well, we have many amazing special editions coming uh, this year. They are not cheap though, and that includes uh, the next one. It is The Fall of Light by Steven Erickson. So I wanted to post about this in my previous episode of SFF Spotlight, but I figured it will be sold out anyway. There is no point of me <laughs> talking about it because nobody will be able to buy it. And then somehow I checked their website and their lettered edition which cost, by the way, $1,500, is still available. So I don't know, if you want to get yourself a copy of that, then try to get it. The cover art and the interior artworks are done by Grant Griffin, and I know that uh, the Subterranean Press edition of Malazan, anything in the Malazan world, are some of the most coveted limited and special editions. As for me, I guess I will be just, I will be waiting for the Broken Binding edition of Malazan Book of the Fallen. <laughs> and speaking of the Broken Binding, well, I will be revealing the cover to Death House Gates uh, quite soon. And they will also talk about their new subscription for the month of April until the month of June. That is happening within this week, I assume uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And yeah, it is an exciting one, very exciting one. And I cannot wait to see people's reaction uh, to it. And other than that, uh, there is a new special edition being revealed from The Broken Binding and it's regarding uh, The Emperor of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. This will conclude their special editions for The Broken Empire trilogy by Mark Lawrence. And yes, the cover art is once again done by Jason Chan. Beautiful cover art, similar to the one that is done by Grim Oak Press, but this one will not contain any interior artworks, like the one being released by Grim Oak Press. Understandable though, their prices are also very different from one another. But speaking of Grim Oak Press, this is the last time I'll be talking about this. Uh, this is about The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, Grim Oak Press edition. It is available to purchase now. The top two uh, special edition tiers, they are both sold out. And yeah, they are very expensive and they're sold out within minutes. I think the rare edition actually sold out within two minutes. But the first two tiers of the Name of the Wind Grim Oak Press edition are still available. This is for the black and white edition and also the fully colored edition. Both of them are priced at $150 and also at $300. I should note though that if you want to get yourself a copy of this one, this is shipping only to the USA and Canada due to rights issue. If you're outside of US and Canada, you better find someone uh, located in those two places to keep the book for you first before getting them uh, to you. Unfortunately, that has to be the only solution for this one. And finally, after this, we'll be talking about uh, Kickstarter campaigns. And this is regarding the spring uh, collection, spring 2024 collection of the Folio Society. Folio Society has announced that this will be their titles for the spring collection this year. 
and probably the one that really caught my interest is the Gorman Gas Trilogy by Titus Grun, which I haven't read, but I heard so many wonderful things about. And then that edition for The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Love that book and love that series very much. The full specs and details of this spring collection will be revealed in early March 2024, so in about I think two or three weeks uh, from now. And moving on to Kickstarter campaigns, honestly, for this week, today's episode, there are no new Kickstarter campaigns. I have talked about these Kickstarter campaigns in the previous episode, and I will just mention that they are live now. The first one is regarding The Demon Awakens by R.A. Salvatore, and uh, this is released by Redmark Creative. It is fully funded already. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign has exceeded 60,000 uh, US dollars, but there are still plenty of stretch goals uh, to meet. The cover art is done by Wayne Reynolds, with interior artworks being uh, illustrated by Felix Ortiz. And it will also come with gilded edges, signed by Salvatore himself, and designed and also directed by Sean T. King. Beautiful edition, in my opinion. I haven't read anything by R.A. Salvatore, though. Yeah, I haven't read The Legend of Driss yet. And I don't know, maybe one day, uh, fingers crossed, Ritmark will be doing a special edition of The Legend of Driss. And no, this is not giving a hint or anything. This is just my hope because Legend of Driss is one of the most popular fantasy series and it will be so cool to see a fine press edition treatment of The Legend of Driss. But if you are a fan of the Demon War Saga, I think it is practically confirmed that Ritmark will be doing book 2 and book 3 of the series as well in their own style. And moving on, Death Stars Part 1 Kickstarter campaign by Ben Gelly. It's live now. Again, just like the previous two books, this one is illustrated by Dennis Kornav, and the color scheme is green with the cover art done by Rachel St. Clair. And it is fully funded already, and if you are someone who missed your chance of getting a copy of the previous two books, uh, The Written and also Pell Kings, it is possible to get both of them in this Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, in the Kickstarter campaign of Dead Stars uh, Part 1. And after Dead Stars Part 1, we only have Dead Stars Part 2, and then Ben Gelly will succeed at doing an illustrated edition of his four books in the Emanesca series, his first series and his first Norse mythology inspired series. And I want to say congratulations once again to Ben Gelly for this. And after that, we also have the Kickstarter campaign for the second book in the Queen of Thieves series by Andy Palaquin, Thief of the Night Guild. Similar to what I said before in the previous episodes of SFF Spotlight, this one book will contain practically the same features as uh, Child of the Night Guild, and also the cover art will be illustrated by Andy Hagosari, there will be interior artworks by Daniel Korea, and more. I own a copy of Child of the Night Guild, as you can see here, and I think it is a beautiful edition. I still haven't read anything by Andy Pelequin though, but I heard a lot of great things about his books, especially his Dark Blade series, which I will talk about uh, later. But this Queen of Thieves series is actually a series that takes place in the same world as his Dark Blade uh, series. And moving on to the next one, this is again a reminder that Drew Mindor by Michael J. Sullivan, the newest book in the Radia Chronicles after more than five years, uh, the Kickstarter campaign for this one will begin on the 13th of February. So if you are watching this on the 13th of February, then the Kickstarter campaign is probably uh, live now. But I want to mention something or to correct uh, one thing. In my previous episode of SFS Spotlight, I talked about the cover change that happened to the Rhyria Chronicles, but that is not truly correct apparently because I heard about this from Michael Sullivan. They plan, and you can actually see this in the Kickstarter campaign, I think, my grievance regarding the Kickstarter campaign of Drew Mindor or the upcoming re-release of the Raria Chronicle hardcovers is that they doesn't feature the same cover art similar to The Death of Dulgad or The Disappearance of Winter's Daughter. So the cover art to The Death of Dulgad and The Disappearance of Winter's Daughter, both of them are illustrated by Mark Simonetti. The first two books in the Raria Chronicles are both illustrated by Larry Rostan. So in this case, because the first two books are published by Orbit Books, it already features a different artist. And in the fifth book, Drew Mindor, I thought the book would not receive the same cover art treatment, meaning that I thought Mark Simonetti would not return to do the cover art. Now, it hasn't been confirmed that Mark Simonetti will return to do the cover art, but Michael Sullivan is determined to make sure the next artist, assuming that it is not Mark Simonetti, will follow a similar style and cover design to the one that was given to the disappearance of Winter's Daughter and also the death of Dulgat, but only for the paperback 
edition. This is the information that I didn't know in my previous SFF Spotlight episode. So if you are someone who got yourself a copy of the paperback edition of uh, let's say the first four books in the Radia Chronicles, it is still possible to match the design with the release of the paperback edition, I think about a year after the Kickstarter campaign. I know many of you like me are really confused about all the situations regarding this cover art and cover design changes and whether which one is similar or not. I think you really should check out the Kickstarter campaign and read every word uh, in there. But again, the Kickstarter campaign of Jumindor will premiere on the 13th of February. But let's move on to the last Kickstarter campaign I want to spotlight and this is not released yet. I talked about this already in my previous episode of SFF Spotlight, but this is regarding Dawn of the Void Trilogy Omnibus Deluxe Edition by Fail Tucker, and it will feature a brand new cover art, interior illustrations, high quality premium acid free paper, Smithson binding, and also fully colored end sheets and gilded page edges. And the Kickstarter campaign for the Dawn of the Void Trilogy Omnibus will premiere on the 15th of February, so that's uh, this Thursday. I have read only two books by Phil Tucker so far, and I enjoyed both of them. I really need to get around to reading more of his books uh, really soon, especially the Great Immortal Souls uh, series. I actually made about like 50% through that, but after that, because due to my reading mood and how busy my life was, I really couldn't uh, continue back then. I need to get around to reading that again. But yeah, uh, we have a lot of books by Phil Tucker and I haven't read Dawn of the Void trilogy yet. But with so many praises, I look forward to reading Dawn of the Void trilogy hopefully using this premium edition uh, soon. So that's it for the section of Kickstarter campaign, but of course I need to mention again an artwork of this backer kit campaign by Brandon Sanderson regarding Words of Radiance, which will premiere really soon in early March 2024, about again two or three weeks from now. But Brandon Sanderson and the Dragon Steel team just revealed another fully colored artwork implemented inside their edition of Words of Radiance Leatherbound Edition. And this time we have an artwork of the Ality going to war by Howard Lyon. As I said before, it seems like Dragon Steel is going incredibly all out on their edition of Words of Radiance. It is very likely that this will become their best special edition so far and that's saying a lot considering how beautiful Warbreaker and their edition of the Way of Kings Leatherbound Edition already. Again, just as a reminder, I have the link to all this special edition and Kickstarter campaign listed in the description down below, so make sure uh, to check that. Now let's move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. Time to talk about some TV show adaptation first, and then we will move on to talk about cover reveals and also noteworthy release. There aren't too many of them though, but for the TV show adaptation, the first one, it has been confirmed, there will be another TV show adaptation regarding well, a story in A Song of Ice and Fire, and this time it is regarding Aegon the Conqueror. And yeah, I'm excited about this because I love the story of Aegon the Conqueror and I'm quite surprised that House of the Dragon did not actually adapt this into their show. But similar to every TV show for a sci-fi or a fantasy adaptation, well, take everything with a grain of salt. There is a chance that they're not happening, but I know what's happening and it is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch TV show adaptation. This one will premiere in May. It will contain nine episodes and Dark Matter was one of the first few sci-fi novels that I managed to read and really enjoyed. I really enjoyed it. I think it is a good pitch turner and I look forward to how Apple TV will adapt this. I mean, I have watched plenty of sci-fi show from Apple TV and they are pretty good. I haven't watched Foundation yet, but for the rest, they are quite faithful to their source material as well. So because of that, I am excited about Dark Matter. And now let's move on to the next section of SFS Spotlight. Time to talk about four cover reveals. And the first one is for the new edition, new paperback edition of The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch. The first book in The Gentleman Bastards is getting a new cover art treatment for their paperback edition. This one is published uh, by Delray, so the US edition. The cover to this one is done by Andrew Davis. Although it looked pretty, I must say though that this cover art doesn't really reflect uh, the lies of Lord Lamora, in my opinion anyway. When I first saw this, I thought it looked pretty, but at the same time, I was a bit surprised that this is the lies of Lord uh, Lamora. There are good news from this. Scott Lynch has mentioned he recently took a new author's photo, professional photograph, and well, the reason is not exclusive to this edition. So yeah, we have plenty of gentleman bastard news, I assume, uh, coming up. And the next cover reveal will be for the second book and also the last book in the Witch Compendium 
Compendium of Monsters Duology by Genoviva di Mova. Just like the first book of Foul Days, this one is illustrated again by the absolutely incredible uh, Rovi Nakai. And I think the cover art is as beautiful as the first book of Foul Days. The Foul Days is actually one of my most anticipated fantasy debut uh, to read uh, this year. I cannot deny that the beautiful cover art is partly responsible for my attraction uh, to the series. But at the same time, I did hear a lot of great things about this Slavic-inspired uh, fantasy series, so hopefully it will be a great one. This also means, even though Foul Days is still not released yet, I think it will release. I think it will be released in June. So this means this entire duology will be released this year. It will start and also finish uh, within this year. So I will try to get around to reading both of them, and after that. For the sub fantasy uh, cover reveals, we have two sub fantasy books to spotlight. The first one is regarding the eighth installment in the Dark Blade series by Andy Palaquin. Again, the cover art is done by Luciano Fleitas, and look at that, there is a flamberge. The assassin, I assume the main character here, I haven't started reading the series yet, is wielding a flamberge weapon. I think it is so badass. And I look forward to reading this series someday. It is already the eighth book, and it will be released in the 20th of February. I think Andy Pellegrin is incredibly productive as an author. His books in the Dark Blade series are not small either, and well, as it turns out, I think in total, there will be 12 books in the Dark Blade series. 10 or 12 books. So yeah, it is a long series, a long and I think uh, epic fantasy series. I already own Dark Blade Assassin, the first book in the series for quite a while now, and hopefully I can get around to reading it uh, within this year. At least maybe the first and the second book uh, in the series. And the last cover reveal for today's episode of SFS Spotlight, this is for Sing No Sons and Sing the Night by Michael Michel, the author behind the grim dark fantasy debut the price of power again just like dark blade this is another grim dark series that i want to read again hopefully uh within this year i keep saying that because i just have way too many review requests and books that i want to read i cannot predict when i will get around to actually reading them but well again keeping my fingers crossed but this one, I think it's not related to the Price of Power uh, series because this is a collection of short stories, I think more in the literary fiction nature rather than grimdark fantasy novel. But again, if the Price of Power is as good as people said, those who have read it tend to enjoy it. Then after I read the Price of Power, I think I will try reading this one. And the cover to this collection of short stories is illustrated by Meblood. And now we move on to the final section of SFF Spotlight. Time to spotlight three new noteworthy releases. These three books, they are out now. The first one is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. The first book in the Shadow of the Leviathan series, a murder mystery series that I really enjoyed. But that shouldn't come as a surprise. I love pretty much all of Robert Jackson Bennett's books that I have read. Whether it is the Divine Series Trilogy, uh, the Founders Trilogy, and now the Tainted Cup, I love all of them. And yeah, this is another really entertaining and fun one. I call this one as a pitch. It is pretty much Sherlock Holmes or Knives Out in an Attack on Titan inspired fantasy setting, even though it is probably a coincidence that it reminded me of the Attack on Titan or Singeki no Kyojin. But if you want to know my full positive thoughts regarding the Tainted Cup, I have posted a full spoiler free review regarding this book on my YouTube channel, I think at the end uh, of last year. And after that, we also have the release of The Trials of Empire by Richard Swan. This is the third and the concluding volume uh, to the Empire of the Wolf Trilogy. I have read and quite enjoyed this one as well. I do not think it was as good as the first two books, but the second half of this one definitely delivered a satisfying and explosive conclusion to the Empire of the Wolf Trilogy. And I cannot get enough of this beautiful cover art done by Martina Pachkova. Here is hoping that whatever Richard Swan decides to write next will feature the same cover art by Martina Pachkova again. And finally, speaking of the great emo Mortal Souls earlier. This is kind of like a cover reveal and also a new noteworthy release. And this is for The Last Rock by Phil Tucker, the third book in the great Immortal Souls, the sequel to Bastion, and also The Rascor Plains is out now. Again, if you love progression epic fantasy series, then I recommend you to try reading this series. It is 
uh, arguably one of the most highly praised progression fantasy series right now. And for those of you who ask me about this, I have no idea how many books uh, there will be in the Great Immortal Soul series. These are large books and Phil Tucker has mentioned there is a good chance we will have more than five or six books in the Great Immortal Souls uh, series. But yeah, that's the last topic of today's SFF Spotlight episode. And well, as always, do let me know what you think about all the news that I just spotlighted. And again, of course, do tell me which one excites you uh, the most. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.